Okay, so hello, lovely listeners again. Um, today, it's, it's my great honor to have um, a friend, Megan Gibson, on the podcast today. Megan is, well, I'll let Megan describe what Megan does and where she's come from, but she's a very positive, bubbly, wonderful human being. And um, I think me and Megan are going to be working a bit closer together in the future, which I'm really excited about because uh, I'm looking to get into coaching. But this is about Megan. This isn't about me. So welcome, Megan. Thank you ever so much for your time today. Thank you. I'm up and awake. Ready? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's Megan at 6 a.m. where she's from. Are you in the Gold Coast, Megan? I am. I am the Gold Coast, but it's winter. And it only has to drop two degrees and we all put jumpers on. It's not actually that cold. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's boiling here at the moment, so um, which uh, it's a nice change. So, Megan, thanks again for coming on today. Um, as you know, the theme of this podcast is about people who um, basically aren't prepared to settle um, in their life in whatever that might be for them. So... I suppose it would be great for you to give a bit of a backstory to the listeners in terms of, you know, where you've come from, where you are at. Um, what is it? I mean, for me, there's been a lot of things that I've realized over the years, but you know, what are the things or the thing that you realized you were settling for? So. Hmm. Where do I begin? <laughs> um, well, I think for me, I started settling a really long time ago uh, for many reasons. Um, the first sort of job I had coming out of high school was a hairdresser. And it's not that it wasn't something I was interested in or something that, you know, um, sparked my interest in terms of being inspired and wanting to be good at it and all that kind of stuff. It was something I was interested in for a long time, but I really only started that to get away from a situation that I was in, in high school, that just couldn't continue. So it was my only out really, but I did excel. Like one of the things about me is um, I've always, if I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it well. Um, even if, you know, you don't know you're settling. <laughs> so even if you are, um, whatever I put my mind to, I've always given it my all. It's just who I am. Um, I've come to realize my ripe old age 42 that that is who I am um, and I did I was a hairdresser for 25 years and I did a lot of other things in between that I've had three children I've got married I've, um, I've had businesses of my own I've had a hairdressing salon of my own um, in and around family and things like that but I've always um, considered myself or called myself a hairdresser um, when really and I look at who I actually identify as, I don't identify as that at all um, for the reasons I gave as to why I started that career. Um, so I was very successful. Uh, I've always uh, had very happy clients and made many, many, many great friends who are still my friends through that industry. So it's never, I've never looked at it as upon a bad, being a bad choice or you know, being something that I, you know, I settled for and then regretted, but, I know that if I'd stayed in high school, gone all the way through, that I would have made different choices. And I've often thought about where my life would have led, but that's not very healthy either because of our life's a journey. Yeah. Uh, so where I've ended up, and interestingly enough, what I do now is I am actually a, well, I call myself a personal coach, a coach of, of uh, individuals, uh, helping them to understand at the core who they are um, and then I'm, and then mastering identifying with that and aligning with that in terms of, you know, what their values are and, you know, what they're here to do and what they're here to um, set out and, and envision the world to be for themselves. And so, you know, obviously I've done that work for myself and now coaching others. I've been doing that for about six years. I can't say I've been excelling at that for six years. I've been refining those skills, right, as we do in any career. I've got to the point now where I fundamentally believe that's how we make the best choices. And whenever I find myself now, and I have recent times, something more major um, where I realized I wasn't happy was my relationship, which was also 25 years um, long. Uh, I just realized I wasn't happy there um, completely. I was not not happy, but there was 
it's like what you say, you know, once you know, you can't unknow. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and it just comes down to an alignment of that vision and an alignment of those, those values that I know to be true and how I identify with them now is very different than how I identified with them when I first uncovered them. I've learned to master using those things as rudders to try and, you know, figure out the best way forward <laughs> um, out of those situations where you realise, you know, shit, I'm, excuse my French, I'm not happy. Um, so, yeah, I guess that kind of sums up everything I've done and some of the things I've settled for. I mean, we can dig into more of them yeah. um, if you want, Mel. If, um, in terms of your relationship, how sort of, was there a defining moment in terms of you realizing that you weren't happy or was it a, a gradual over the years thing? I mean, 25 years is a long time to be with somebody, especially when you're only 42. So you were, you were young when you... <laughs> I uh, was very young. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, it's, sorry, you go. I was going to say, I appreciate that, you know, God, we massively changed, don't we, from our teens to our we 20s did. to our 30s to our, especially our 40s seem to be a pivotal time for a lot of people. Um, so what, what was it that sort of got you from being probably very happy in the early days to all of a sudden mm. realizing that you weren't happy or that you were settling? What, what was it? Was there anything in particular? Well, I'm going to say it was a similar, a similar journey to my career, to be honest. Um, situation I found myself in around that time. Um, I took on a new job and then within six months met my husband and, you know, it, yeah, obviously like it was good for a long time, but where I was, where I've, like I've realized in reflection is it's a very similar journey. Um, things are happening at home and, you know, he was this beacon of light that just came in and, you know, swooped me away from all of that. And while we were happy, we were happy for a long time and, you know, I probably would still, to a degree, be happy. Let's be real. Like, we're talking about not settling, not being miserable, right? Um, I just kind of realised how different we were. Um, and some of those differences started to, um, over time, prevent or I, I found myself choosing between what I really wanted to do and what I should do based on who we were together. Right. And some of the things I want to do are big big things you know we only have one life and i give everything my all and you know i'm someone who's quite comfortable being uncomfortable um happy taking risks to a degree obviously um calculated risks or strategic risks and he became somebody over because of circumstances he found himself in over the years which i supported him through as you do in any marriage um found himself to be somebody who was quite uncomfortable with those things. And so that really drove us, you know, in different directions within our relationship. Um, and you have a choice at the end of the day, you know, you can continue down that road and try and come back and, or you can, I, I guess I, I kind of had that realization eventually um, over a sort of a year that I was like, um, if I stay, I'm going to have just have more of the same. And is that what I want? And is that aligned with where I want to go? Um, yeah, I guess that's kind of where it got to for me. It wasn't this big, horrible, you know, <laughs> dramatic ending. In fact, we still talk nearly daily um, about the kids and things like that. But I really wanted to be able to do that, to, to make that decision and make that choice from a place of, love rather than a place of um resentment you know when you were going through because obviously you've got three kids um when you were feeling the way you were feeling how did that play out in terms of your trying to make a decision anyway because it's not easy because i've been there myself and you know you've got somebody else or other people to think of so did that sort of stunt you for a while do you think oh yeah Oh yeah. I mean, let's be fair. Like no one wants to see their family. Um, I went through that myself as a, uh, as a child twice. Um, and that's definitely something that's held me in place for a long time. Just that, let alone having my own children. Um, so, you know, 
it depends, I think, too, on what ages they're at and what they're going through, things like that. I've got one who one son who doesn't cope with change, um, never has. So that also played on my mind. Um, so yeah, you have to consider so many factors and they do they do keep you in place to answer your question for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And for me, for me, I just kind of went, well, I want them to I want them to see the real me. I want them to see me being a, the full, fullest version of myself. That's what I want for anyone I sit in front of and coach is for them to feel like that's who they can be in the world. And I just didn't feel like that's who I was being or could be where I was. Um, but I wanted them to have that mum, that example, because that's what I want for them. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, yeah. so since the, um, since obviously you've, you've been, uh, you made the decision and you left, how, I know when I did it, it's never as bad in reality as, it, as it is in your mind. Oh yeah. Because kids adapt really quickly. Um, and they're surprising as well, you know? Um, so did you find that with your kids? Was it a kind mm -hmm. of, you know, obviously they were, they would have been sad about it, but how have they sort of They've all handled it different. They've all handled it differently. Um, some of them, some of them are not surprised. I not sound like I've got six. I've got three. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, like the older, the boys are older, you know, they're, they're nearly adults themselves to a degree. Like the oldest one's 18 um, next well, October. And then I have another one that's 16 next month. Um, so they, they struggled because I guess they've always, they've got to a point where they just thought that's how things were. But when I got talking to them individually on their own, um, you know, they saw what we didn't think they were seeing, um, which is hard to hear, but you know, we'll, we'll do our best to protect our children from everything that we don't want them to know. Um, and then my daughter, she's 12 and she's been phenomenal. I mean, <laughs> she's a bit of an old soul anyway, to be honest, but she just wants everyone to be happy. And she's constantly checking on me almost daily, even when she's not here, just check how my day has been, how I'm feeling. Um, you know, and she, she'll look at me and she'll see I'm having a bit, you know, don't quite look as, you know, bright and chirpy as normal. And then she'll just ask, how are you doing, mum? Like, very, very, very perceptive. Um, so she has surprised me, but then I'm not surprised if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, I guess I'm surprised to see her being so wise at such a young age. Um, but I always knew it was there. If that makes sense. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So you, you've had uh, different reactions and different conversations, but ultimately they all knew that you weren't happy and that they want you to be happy. Both of us. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And they've noticed a difference in both of us as well, especially Grace. She's very forthcoming. So, you know, she's, she notices how um, even, especially her dad doing things that he hasn't, you know, allowed himself to do for a long time. Um, and that makes me happy because that's all I ultimately want for, for anyone. Um, so, you know, I've definitely found that people who haven't seen me for a long time have told me that I look different, which is weird. <laughs> um, but I, you know, I have that spark back in my eye and, um, you know, I'm going after things that I've wanted to do for a long time that I haven't, um, which is, you know, obviously that puts a spark back in your eye anyway, doesn't it? Being doing yeah. new thing. Mm. Yeah. So that's been nice. So in terms of, um, where you're at now, I mean, obviously, you know, you took the decision about your relationship work-wise and I know some of what you're up to, but how's that sort of changed for you from the hairdressing? So when did you stop the hairdressing? I think I did my last client for want of a better word, um, salon or otherwise, probably about 18 months ago. Okay. So not, yeah. Yeah. I always had someone who was, you know, hanging on there, hoping that I would just continue forever. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. So I didn't realize it was that, that soon. Actually, I thought you stopped quite a while back. Um, 
and I know obviously that you've been involved with SFM as, as have I in terms of um, you looked for alternatives. So yes. what, what sort of drove that in terms of obviously you were hairdressing a few years ago full time. Mm. What, what was a sort of um, kickstart, I suppose, that, that drove you into looking for something different for, for your career? Yeah. Do you know what, Mel? I think I've always been looking for something different. That's yeah. how I, it's something I settled for for a really long time, but for practical reasons. Like I, I, um, I was quite proud recently. My oldest one, um, he came, we were talking about what he was going to do. When I said recent, you know, in the last sort of two years, um, what he was going to do for, for work. And he said he decided on an apprenticeship because he wasn't sure what he wanted to do but he said this was a really proud moment for me he said I've always seen you fall back on that and it's always been something you could go back to in life when I've needed to and he said and I think that that's the wisest the best thing he could do at the moment is to have to use this time to create something like that he can fall back on while he's figuring out what he wants to do um, so he is he's like a year into an apprenticeship and he's loving it um, but I'll definitely make sure that he doesn't settle if he doesn't love it forever. <laughs> so for me, like I've, I've pretty much have always had it on the, you know, in sort of side mind, I guess, that I would be looking for something else. So I've done many things. So the first time was when I had my um, second son. I actually started taking photos of babies in hospitals, like newborn babies. Um, and I loved that. It was something different. It was, you know, a new environment. Um, but again, it wasn't, it was just something to get me away from, you know, having to go and stand on my feet all day and, and um, do hair. Uh, I did that. And then not long after that, I started a hairdressing. Uh, sorry, I started a hairdressing. I started a Tupperware business and excelled in that. I did that for about six years. Um, and that's really where I found my love of what I do now, which is, helping people succeed, helping people reach their potential, helping them get out of their own way in terms of being sort of in that sort of mentor role. So I was one of their top managers for about half of that time. And, you know, I just found that I knew I wasn't going to keep hairdressing, but whenever I've needed, because there have been times, as we all know, as we get, you know, go through life where I've needed extra income, um, I've fallen back on it falling back on it or, or just being able to get a job like the next day and walk into a salon and, um, and pick up my scissors. It's been great. But I think I always had that need for something more. But all along the way, as you can see, like we develop skills and we develop, um, you know, ways of being and things that help us figure out what that is. And for me, like it's always been people always been you know working with people and talking to people and what do hairdressers do <laughs> you should have a counseling degree right yeah um so you know i never regretted it but i've always been looking for whatever it was i was going to do so to answer your question like by the time i got round to uh looking into sort of sfm and on that online path i was actually well, there was a situation at home that i really needed to be at home for but or needed to earn We'll be doing something. Um, and I just, I don't know, even know what it was that sparked my attention in the end. It was just, I think it was, I really resonated with the person that I came across who was, she was a mum as well, who had stepped into these new skills that she'd never, you know, thought she'd be able to do. And her story just, I just resonated with it. And here I am now, like it's been a journey, six years, but <laughs> yeah, that's a long answer to your question, but. No, no, that's cool. That's cool. No, it's just, it's just interesting for, one of the reasons why I wanted to start this podcast was because, you know, I've settled myself um, and, and probably I still was, you know, in the career, which has just changed because um, I'm being made redundant. And, and it's funny because all of a sudden these other opportunities have opened up in front of me, which I'm, I feel... Well, I needed to kick up the arse, basically, to get me out of that, <laughs> that comfortable state. And even though I knew I was not happy and settling, mm. the, the, fear, the fear factor of not having that wage, you know, coming in um, to pay the bills that I've 
you know, we all increase our outgoings, don't we? And you get yourself yeah. in, you get yourself stuck. Um, and I've tried, like yourself, tried lots of different things and, um, and I'm still plugging away. Um, so, no, but I suppose, you know, for the listeners really, yeah, I, I, the reason why I wanted to do this podcast is because, you know, I see so many people settling in, in lots of things and I, myself included. And I just think it's really beneficial. Like you said, you know, you like helping people. This is very beneficial. I believe for people to hear other people's stories, to, to understand what triggered their decisions, it, you know, yes. um, what their life situation is. Like you said, that, that young mum you resonated with. Um, I, I think it's really important for people to, to have those little defining moments or those little light bulbs that go off um, yes. for them to, to then start to really think about how they might be able to change their life mm. and not be scared about what may or may not happen because the, the, the thoughts are always worse than the reality. And that's happened all throughout my life. It's always worse in my mind than it ever is in reality. And you think people are going to lose the plot and get angry and scream and shout and, it doesn't really happen. Well, it, do, it might do for some people, but it hasn't for me. You know, there's been a lot of... Um, it's not the norm. Hey? It's not the norm. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think, you know, in terms of just getting an understanding, really, of where you were with your hairdressing and then SFM for six years, but you've been doing coaching as well and, and, and the relationship and, you know, it's like just trying to give them something to really think, right, if she can do it, I can do it. Yeah. Yeah. What, what would you, sorry, you were going to say something. No, go. You had to ask a question. <laughs> sorry. I was going to say, what would you, if you were, um, if there was one thing you could say from your experience or experiences, if there's one thing that you could say that you think would help somebody that might be sat there thinking, I feel trapped, I don't know what to do, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to break his heart, I'm going to break her heart, um, I can't upset the kids, you know, any of those things. Yeah. What, what, what would you want to say to somebody that might be sort of sitting in silence at the moment? It's, in it's interesting you say that particular thing because I've thought about it a lot. What would I say to somebody? Well, if, what would I say to myself 12, 12 months ago? It's probably yeah. the best way to answer it. And, um, you know, at the end of the day, what made me have find the courage, I guess, was just to take the first step. I can't say that I, um, you know, just threw everything away and just was like, that's it. Yeah. Um, for me, it was like, I just had to stop the train. <laughs> like this train's not going where I want it to for want of a better metaphor. Um, I need to stop it here so that I can think. Um, and so that was the first conversation. It's just like, I'm not happy. This is not going where I want to go, where I want to go. I need to, and I literally use that as like that language, I think. Yeah. Um, and that just gave me time to really think. And then like, that was sort of step one. And then there was just like space, right? Suddenly there was just space for me to step into and just kind of look around and okay, well, that wasn't so bad, you know? Um, but I think for me, I think the best advice I could give or the best thing I would have said was, I, if you're not happy, no one around you is going to be happy. Yeah. Um, you know, if you're not feeling like you can be everything you want to be, that's probably not going to change unless you change something, change yourself. And so for me, it was like, well, no one's getting the best of me. I'm not getting the best of me. I'm not happy. That's, that's not who I am or what I'm about. It's not what I hear each other's on. For sure. Um, for me, it's a big, like one of, you know, one of the big things as well is like, if you're going to be in a role, you need to be walking that talk. You know, if you're going, you wouldn't go to a, a fat PT, right? Personal trainer <laughs> to get fit. Some people might, um, but I wouldn't like, I, you know, so to me, it was like that, there was that sense of personal responsibility as well in terms of 
you know, really being who I am um, in every area. And so, yeah, I guess that light bulb moment for me was that I wasn't doing, didn't feel like I was in alignment with that. And also that I was, no one was, I wasn't getting the best out of me because I wasn't being my best. I didn't feel like I could. And so that meant my children weren't, that meant my husband wasn't, that's not fair on him either. Let's be real, like it's two people in a relationship. Um, so yeah, I think that was the defining thing for me at the end, just putting myself in a position where I could be who I'm, be who I am, be who I want to be. But it started with that first step of basically getting some space. Yeah, just creating, yeah stopping things from moving um is the best way to put it you know it's like well let every let, let the people immediate people know which was obviously in this in this instance um my partner um and then make a decision from that place rather than from this place of desperation and fear and all the things that are there before you open your mouth and i mean it's the same with career as well you know um changing careers like you said losing the paycheck whatever like it's when you think about it like that's a huge decision where you don't have anything else so sometimes it's best to go well what do i want to do and sort of start so it's similar it's a similar answer how did you how did you create the space with your husband especially did you did you move out <laughs> this is a conversation okay literally a conversation um a very real conversation um honest about everything that i was feeling um and then there was about six weeks where I, yeah i was definitely going to move out get my own space and you know just try and actually do life see if it was even possible to do on my own i've um, never done it on my own um, but i'm quite proud of how well i've been able to navigate the last 12 months and yeah like it's it's not that hard like you're right it's once you're on the other side of it it's like oh well, that wasn't so bad like i can do this i'm actually moving forward a lot faster than i was before because the, the things that were holding you back most of them are yourself yeah you know and it's so easy to stay and we get more and more and more resentful blaming the other person when really or blaming the job or whatever it is we're selling for when really it's just like well kind of in your own way love like <laughs> it's you <laughs> So it's just taking that step and just, yeah, doing the first thing. But a conversation was definitely the first step. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, well, I think, I think my love, I think we'll bring it to a close because I, I really appreciate um, what you've shared there because it covers, you know, you, you think about uh, what people settle for and it could be anything but the biggies the biggies are always relationships and careers aren't they and that's exactly what you've just yeah. talked about and I think you know just in, in my immediate circle of friends and, and family or whatever you know I see it all the time and it frustrates the hell out of me but then I was doing it and still was doing it recently with my job you know yeah. um, telling, my, telling myself that I needed to because I'm it's just me paying the bills it's you know I'm hmm. I can't just throw it away and then you've got other people's fear around you as well. Yeah, for sure. And I always wanted to say like the universe has got my back and I've got to trust and let, you know, and it's, that's bloody hard to do. Um, mm. And I've been pushed into it now. And, and as I said, these opportunities came to me literally within 24 hours. And uh, I was like, wow, okay, this shit really does work. <laughs> <laughs> Mel, do you know what? I want to just add one quick thing if I can. Yeah, yeah. And that's that, you know, especially with what with the, sh the shoes I wear in terms of career and, and where I want to go with that. And that is that even when we're settling or when we realise we're settling, it doesn't mean that you have to throw away everything that you have and definitely feel like that wasn't what I set out to, you know, I didn't set out to... Um, call it quits or whatever even in even in career um but sometimes that's the way it goes and sometimes you create what, what we know as a wake-up moment for someone right or for 
be that for your, your boss if you're unhappy and you go there and you know they're like well hang on a second like what can we do to make you feel like you're not settling which is what we're talking about uh, and the same can be for a relationship it just you know it's something that changes what's there um so for me it went the way that it did but i definitely feel like for some people you know it can be the difference between things staying the way they are and things changing to where they don't feel like they're settling anymore um, so I just wanted to add that because it's something that I'm really conscious of moving forward in terms of being an example for people who are in my situation. Yeah. Um, I don't want them to feel like that's their only option. Yeah. Sure. Um, you know, so, um, yeah, I just wanted to add that sometimes I feel like that's kind of, you know, what people think they think, Oh, well, you know, not happy. So I have to leave. Um, it's not always the case. Yeah, no, that's, that's really Definitely. good. Definitely. That, that's that's a really good point um because i think i think when i went through it myself you know and then i see other people that are not happy and i think i i was thinking you've got to get out but actually everybody's relationship is different and they may may have something much bigger that they can salvage and grow from um yeah so yeah that's that's a really good point um yeah and i mean you know like i guess where where i was coming from at the time was hoping that he would decide not to settle <laughs> right and then together we would go from that from there but you know and, and i feel like that maybe i'm maybe starting to see that happen which is great yeah. um but i've moved so far from where i was that you know probably won't change now but never say never but yeah like you know i guess there's that there's that wake up moment there for everybody where we realize you know we could be more or have more um so yeah like i think it's a just a good point to make at the end there for me anyway it's something i'm very very aware of yeah um no, yeah great. thank you okay well thank you very much megan um really appreciate your time today and oh um if people want to reach out to you where can they find you ah well i am very much in a transition stage at the moment so a lot of my online presence is exactly that in transition um, but the best place to find me um, on a more regular basis is on Instagram uh, because that is my I chose it my preferred platform <laughs> uh, so yeah the Megs Gibson I couldn't have Megs Gibson someone had that one so it's the Megs Gibson the Megs. well of course <laughs> <laughs> okay that's brilliant um and thank you again megan for um for giving us your insight today thanks for having me i really appreciate the space mel me too thank you very much <laughs>